Hi, I'm Darlene M. Fenrick Washington, and you're on the ramp um, videographies on just talking about today being black in media. And I'm someone who's, who's been working in um, beauty, entertainment, and advertising since I was like 15 years old. I am uh, working on, let's say, 30 years, we would say, um, in the conglomerate of those experiences. But I was watching Time of Essence today, and it's so awesome in what happened with Essence and how they they came back out of uh, the darkness, we should say. Um, but it was so awesome just to, to watch that whole thing and all the things, all the times that it was sold and, you know, to see that um, um, uh, the hair care company go and purchase uh, the the company the way that it did. It was just so awesome. And I'm going to provide links to the company. Shea Moisture is the name of the company that purchased it and uh, the people that were involved and, you know, all the things that went on. But anyway, um, talking about the days when um, magazines were still in print, 80s and 90s, and they were doing, you know, real, real good. And so you take a look at Essence, Ebony Vibe, um, Sophisticates Black Hair, and you can, <laughs> that was the, that was the magazine, like, oh, where's the Sophisticates Black Hair? Because I had to get my hair done, like, um, this and um, whatever star was popular then, you know, you had to get your hair like that one. And Halle Berry had some some styles going on. They all the braid styles, all that sophisticated black hair. But anyway, Black Enterprise, the Network Journal, and then all the other ones, and then all the changes that came behind it once the internet picked up and 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 slapped the crap out of everybody with its takeover of um the world, you know remote just started rocking, you know. And so what you realize is that we are all so blessed um, in this time of existence where things can be at the press of a button. You know, you can get a lot of things done remotely and I'm a grateful chick. Tell me, I mean, I'm telling you. Um, but anyway, so all that time me working in this industry, I across, you know, different companies, different styles of uh, management and things of that nature. And I can stand firm and tell you that no matter what company you go to, you know, you 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 can experience these things: egoism, nepotism, colorism, favoritism, sexual harassment. You got to find that at black companies, definitely. Um, you know, because the black elite ain't no joke. You know, if they say you ain't good enough, guess what? You better be backing down. And then everyone has their own. You know, and, and that's how that's how it's presented and that's how a person can feel. But, you know, it, I'm just saying it, it's just a part of being out here in the work industry, you know, but at white companies, that glass ceiling is a, 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 a glass ceiling that's created through racism, you know, and sexism and any other ism that you can attach to that. But all those same things also exist at white companies. It's just under. um you know, you just add racism to that. And so, you know, at the black company, it's not going to be um, racism there usually, but it will be black elitism there. And I say that knowingly and proudly that I know a lot of the black elite. Um, I ain't calling no names, but I know a lot of them. And, and I, I love all of them that I've worked with and met over the years. I love them all, you know, because there's some some down people. But moving on from, you know, working at the different companies, I'm just saying that's that's what you'll experience. So Essence had its share of that as well. Um, but anyway, um, when Essence finally got back to Black ownership, you know, it was important because we need to be telling our own stories. And what happens when... Um, every time we have something that's really, you know, out there kicking ass and really, you know, rocking the world, so to speak, people picking up on our vibes and they're loving what we're doing. You know, as soon as that happens, you know, a, a white company always is like, oh, let's go buy that up, you know, and then want to go buy it. And then we want to present our stories the way they think that our stories should be told. And so that's why we had all the problems that we had at Essence when they were bought by, you know, Time Magazine. 
And I, I'm not going to say time went into it, you know, with intent to ruin essence, you know, but I will say they wanted, they thought they had a better perspective on our, you know, um, culture than we did. And and that's a big problem because they don't. We there are certain nuances in the black community that are black. You you can be white all day long and say you experienced some type of racism, but until you wear some black skin and walk out in this world, you ain't you ain't experienced racism. And you know, it, you know, it happens whether you're pretty ugly, no matter what, you you it can happen to you. Racism just is what it is. It's it's racism, and it and it really needs to go away because um, there's no sense of entitlement amongst um, human beings that should make you feel so much greater than everyone else. Where you think that nobody else should have anything but you, and you know that's that's I don't I'm not harping on racism. Yeah, I'm against it, but I'm I'm also against um, you know holding people down. And so I think uh, any company that has survived the things that Essence did, as well as Ebony, you know, it's gone. And when I was a, a teenage girl in high school, I wanted to work at Ebony my, so bad my teeth hurt. I wanted to be a part of Ebony and Jet. I wanted to be a part of BNT, BET. And I did work at BET. I temped there for a short while. Didn't want to name names, but it was a very, very short while. Um, and I met some people and I, I still, you know, reach out to those people every now and then and say, hey, you know, but it's 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 that it's that those people that I worked with don't even work there no more. So I see them in, on other platforms. But anyway, um, I I love you all. And I just wanted to point that out, you know, that we need to continue telling our own stories. And I wish I really wish that <clears throat> black companies, when they get their their groove on and they at the top of their game would stop selling their companies to white companies. That is, you know, and I really wish that would happen, but um, to put it plainly, if you um, throw a, a nice raw steak in front of a bunch of lions, then you tell me what's, what's going to happen and what's not going to happen. You'll see right there in your face, what's going to happen. Them lions going to eat. And so, but you know, we have to, if we can just take into consideration all the things that come along with us not being able to tell our own stories and having, you know, um, white media tell our stories for us. I mean, you can watch the news and see that um, and know that, okay, that's not exactly, <laughs> I wouldn't exactly agree with that. And then sometimes they get it right. Not all, you know, white media is out to just slam black people. You know, I'm not suggesting that, but uh, I'm just saying it's, it's okay for us to keep telling our own stories, having our own products, our own restaurants, our own big giant things that we created and that we did. And we need to stay in ownership of those things because every time we don't, they take it over. If or it no longer has that oomph to it, it's always, oh, it was no oomph there anyway. Or, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's never the fact that you took something that had its own essence and nuance um, that belonged to a certain culture. You took it and then you turned it into what you wanted to be. And now it's lost this, its gumption. And that's what happens when, when we, so, you know, if you really want to be a white company and you want to help a black company thrive, don't try to buy their stuff out. You know, you can certainly donate your money in and, and don't try to have a say so in, in something that you, you know, make your recommendations. They'll, you'll be heard because if you if you flop some money in in the in the bucket, you know they're gonna consider what you're saying. But you, don't be surprised if they come back with hell no, because <laughs> you ain't you ain't you are not black, and you just cannot understand or embrace a lot of the essence of of the see it you can dance in it you know and all that stuff and you can appreciate it. and we can appreciate that we're american and we and we and we you know we can you know deal in that but um you know certainly i i don't feel like i'm gonna go to asia and you know take over asia because i got a little bit of asian history or i've been exposed to asian culture and now i'm suddenly i'm gonna be an asian magazine executive you know 
No, I, I'd rather I'd be like, no, I'll take a back seat. I'll give you some information and you can take it a leap. You know, thank you. That's what I would do. But anyway, um, that's all I wanted to say about that. And I hope you can appreciate where I'm coming from. Hope you have some love for me as I have for you. Thank you, people.